Uh, thank you, Concorla. As Minister for Innovation, Research and Development, I wanted to concentrate on one element of part three of the Brexit omnibus legislation, which will also be addressed by my colleague, uh, Minister Humphreys later, Humphreys later. And this is the delivery of the key objective of the government, which is through Enterprise Ireland, uh, supporting increased levels of research, development and innovation for Irish-based companies. And it's a known fact that companies that invest in innovation are higher performers in terms of employment and export sale at sales and are of course, course the most resilient uh, through recessionary and other economic so shocks such as Brexit than those that do not. By enhancing their research, development and innovation capabilities and activities, Irish firms have a greater competitive advantage and will be able to main, maintain it by developing cutting-edge products and services that are better performing, more efficiently delivered and more effective uh, for their customers. Uh, through the proposed legislative amendments in Section 29 of the Industrial Development Act 1986, we are enabling Enterprise Ireland to help position Irish businesses to be more agile and to be able to respond to the global challenges, including Brexit. Innovation, whether it is a generation uh, and, uh, uh, if you like, an introduction of new ideas or the invention of new technology, development of new and better product, uh, products, processes and services, is about the constant uh, drive for improvement. And it's about finding solutions that are original, more effective, but most importantly, deliver uh, positivity and deliver change. Given my role as Minister for Training, Skills, Innovation, Research and Development, I have a particular interest in driving in innovation, not only for my department, but in delivering the government's objective to create the favourable conditions where innovation can flourish and where quality employment opportunities can be grown and maintained. My department leads on cross-government research, development, science and technology, and that's the strategy 2020. The strategy sets out a roadmap to deliver our vision to be a global innovative leader, focusing on the excellence of our research, the development of our talent and, of course, the impact of our investment. And Ireland has a reputation and a great reputation for science excellence and it's evidenced by our, our, our ascent in the global rankings over the last number of years. In 2018, the European Innovation Score Scoreboard put Ireland at number nine in EU and we are now first in innovation SMEs, first for, first for employment impacts of innovation and, of course, first for sales impacts of innovation. In both Innovation 2020 and Enterprise Ireland 2025 refreshed, we place an emphasis on, if you like, investing in innovation, developing talent and starting and growing innovation entrepreneurs to ensure that we build resilience in our economy and realise the full potential of our people in our regions. The pace of technological change is relentless and ensuring we have the right support for business and for the development of Ireland's talent base now and in the future involves a constant process of analysing, surveilling and of course uh, consulting. The department's job is to support the future being imagined by our researchers and innovators and to deliver a targeted funding uh, and supports to keep us at the vanguard of innovation and technological uh, development. Um, and an, ex an exceptional, if you like, uh, collaboration between industry, academia, state agencies and, of course, the regulatory authorities drives Ireland's dynamic R&D sector innovation in 2020. It, it drives that vision out for Ireland to become a global innovative leader, which we are becoming, and we are currently a strong innovator, and I've said we're, no, we're placed number nine in the European Innovation Scoreboard. Ireland's continued growth and prosperity depends on maintaining, indeed, increasing investment across the board of science, technology, innovation spectrum, and creating the right conditions to help business. Uh, to that end, in 2019, the government provided additional investment for over £40 million for research and innovation-related activities through the Department of Business, uh, in, uh, Enterprise and Innovation. This brought the Department's allocation of research, innovation and activities to £370 million in 2019. Science Foundation Ireland and Enterprise Ireland account for the largest share of the Department's innovation budget. Together, they account for 80% of the budget. As always, SFI and EI continue to leverage EU and private sector funding uh, for research programmes uh, building uh, to successes today. Through Budget 2019, we were able to give good effect uh, to the government's new Disruptive Technologies Innovation Fund. This £500 million fund has, as announced in Project Ireland 2014, and provides a very welcome injection of new funding into research and innovation. £20 million has been allocated to the DTIF to allow first projects to, uh, to commence in 2019 as part of 100, the £118 million in 2020. 
In addition to the legislative amendments to enhance ENR&D supports to business proposed in this bill, we are taking actions on various fronts to ensure that in any Brexit scenario that we will continue to pursue our strong quality and valued relationship with the EU research across uh, 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 that's developing uh, relations with research and innovation agendas. As a matter of fact, Enterprise Ireland has been working closely with Innovative U e uh, uh, UK to explore opportunities now and in the future for Irish companies to work together. We have a strong history of research and innovation collaboration, both bilateral cl collaborations and collaborations under the EU framework programmes that have been extremely fruitful over the years. And for instance, last year, um, SFI's research community reported approximately 450 collaborations with academia right across the, U, uh, uh, the UK. We have also excellent examples of funding partnerships, the Royal Society, the Wellcome Trust and the Biotechnology and Biological Science Research Council, that's the BBSRC, who I have met on a number of occasions, are all involved in collaborative programmes with SFI, uh, the Health Research Board and others. The unfolding Brexit situation carries risks uh, for Ireland's research and innovation interests. However, there are also opportunities to build stronger relations that are mutually beneficial to both county, countries. And I know that our research and innovation agencies have ambitious, have ambitious plans to deepen alliances with EQ and, uh, uh, UK institutions and agencies. As you may be aware, the first UK-Ireland research uh, funders forum was held in Dublin. Uh, last November. The event provided an opportunity for UK and Irish research founders to engage in research and innovation strategies to discuss ways to strengthen our collaborative arrangements. And a further, meet, a further meeting and forum will take place in, in uh, Great Britain over the next couple of months. We will also need to pay significant attention to the North-South collaborations and build on existing collaborations between our agencies, including the US-Ireland R&D partnerships, a unique initiative, and that involves agencies right across the three, three jurisdictions, the US, Ireland and Northern Ireland. And I look forward to strengthening that collaboration to ensure we protect what has been built and identify new areas of opportunity for Irish and UK uh, research innovators. Uh, SFI has focused on a number of strategic actions and, and areas resulting from that proposed withdrawal of the UK from the, Europe, uh, from the European Union. In the event that the UK uh, continues to be a member of the EU, EU research and innovation programme, our bilateral ties will enable research terms in Ireland, the UK, to, if you like, to compete uh, more strongly. In the event that the UK is excluded from some of these programmes, then these bilateral ties will become really vitally important. Uh, since uh, F Sounds Foundation Ireland has al already joined funding collaborations with a number of UK research funders, in including UK research and innovation, and this is particularly in engineering and physical sciences, Research Council, the EPSCR, they're known as, and the Biotechnology and Biological Science Research Council, BBSRC. The Wellcome Trust and the Royal Society that I mentioned earlier, these collaborative giant funding programmes have been strengthened and broadened. And uh, can I say that Science Foundation Ireland partnered with EPSRC in their recent call for centres in doctoral training. Science Foundation Ireland will invest uh, 36 million uh, to fund approximately 150 PhD students in Ireland to be trained in seven new giant centres of doctoral training, link linking universities in the UK uh, with seven Science Foundation Ireland researchers. Could I finally say that on a number of occasions I've been to a number of universities in England, I've met many of the researchers and their scientists, and uh, uh, my belief is that speaking to their scientists, speaking to their innovative drivers on innovation in England, that they see it as crucial and urgent that Ireland continues its innovation ties, its research and development uh, with England, uh, with the UK, and also I deal with uh, Horizon 2020, and that's the Competitive Council funding. And it is, it, you know, I, meeting some of the UK representatives there, they are, I feel, distressed that uh, they may not be the part, that they, they may not be able to play the part in the comp competitive in the Horizon 2021 20, funding that they would like to do. Indeed, um, I had a, a, a conference call with our new minister, Minister Skidmore, and I met him. I, I hosted a breakfast for ministers in the Irish Embassy in London last week, and he himself and all of them are anxious that the collaboration that we have with Ireland and the UK continues. They believe it's essential 
uh, uh, for coll collaboration with our uh, institutes of technology, our universities, and also EOI and all that drive innovation in Ireland. Thank so you, um, I think that's important that we continue to collaborate with the UK, irrespective of what happens. Thank you. Ed.